computer. It is recording. Hello. So this is the um, Elegant Trogan survey information video for us uh, surveyors for 2020 of the Huachuca Mountains and the Chiricahua Mountains. So for Tucson Audubon in partnership with um, Rick Taylor, formerly of Borderland Tours, we organized these five surveys of five different mountain ranges as sort of a flagship survey of the Arizona Important Bird Areas program. All five of these mountain ranges that we survey are important bird areas within Arizona and trogons are definitely a signature species. They're one of our priority species since Arizona is pretty much the only place in the entire United States that has a breeding population of elegant trogons. Um, Tucson Audubon along partnering with Arizona Game and Fish takes, um, takes it incredibly seriously that we monitor this breeding population. So these five mountain ranges together represent most of the areas in Arizona that these trogons breed. I do get reports from some other mountain ranges throughout the, the spring, but they're a little harder to access and there's fewer birds. So maybe in the future, we'll end up surveying places like the Rincon Mountains and the Galliero Mountains, both of which I've had reports from this spring of, of trogons being up there. But these five that we do are, the, are the, the heart of their breeding range in Southeast Arizona. Okay, so this meeting's for the Huachucas survey, which is this coming Saturday, and then the Chiricahua Mountains survey, which is the coming Sunday. So um, I wanna first cover, since this meeting is being recorded in 2020, the year of the great COVID-19 pandemic, we have made some changes that are very relevant for all surveyors to know. Um, Part of the reason we're doing this new meeting is we are unable to meet in person before the survey uh, for everyone's safety. We will be uh, requiring social distance protocols during these surveys. And so no carpooling with people outside of your household. Um, if people do uh, survey together as a team, but they're not from the same household, they need to drive separately and then social distance in the field. That has worked fine for um, the, the three surveys we've already completed for the elegant trogans. Although for the most part, I really am trying to not team people together unless they specifically say I'm bringing someone with me from my household or they're, they're bringing someone that they plan on social distancing with. I'm not just pairing people together as we've sometimes done in the past. Um, another big change is we normally would have a gathering meeting spot after a survey so that people could come and drop off their data forms, socialize, talk to, to myself and Rick about what trogans they saw and where, that kind of thing, sort of talk through the, the data. Uh, we are gonna be unable to do that this year uh, for, for safety reasons. So I've developed an online survey. It's using Google Forms. So it's literally a survey on your computer that after the fact you can enter your data. So it takes you through some questions of like who you are, where you were. And then if you, the last question on that first page is did you have trogans? If you did, it takes you to another page where you can put in information about your trogans. Um, so I think it's been going pretty well. The last three surveys, people, a lot of people had absolutely no problem entering their data. If that is not for you, you can email me a copy of your data sheet if you'd like. Another major change is everything is online. So all the resources are online. So if you go to the Arizona Birding, Arizona, excuse me, Arizona IBA page, and then to the resources tab and the trogans, which I'll show when I share my desktop, uh, there's a page for each of the mountain ranges and that's where all the data forms and information about the survey is located. So um, rather than just email people a million attachments, it's all been posted now on the website so that you can uh, download it at your convenience and print it out since we're unable to meet beforehand and hand out data sheets as we've done in the past. So everyone has to sort of print their own data sheets or keep notes in a notebook to be then entered into the form, the data entry form later. Um, a very relevant issue as well for this coming weekend is Fort Huachuca. The uh, Huachuca Mountains survey, many of our best routes are on Fort Huachuca. Fort Huachuca does allow civilian entry onto the fort. You have to stop and get a pass, but due to these recent safety concerns, they are only issuing passes to people who live within 60 miles of the fort. I did call Fort Huachuca and spoke with, um, spoke with someone in the security office at the Vandeman Gate. And he said it was 60 miles 
60 driving miles. So not, not as the Trogan flies, but so if you were to put your address into Google Maps and do it to Fort Huachuca, if you're further away than 60 miles, which is anyone in Tucson, anyone in the Rio Rico or Nogales area, and anyone in the Chiricahua area, you're further than 60 miles, they will not be issuing new passes. However, they will honor passes that are still valid. So anyone in Sierra Vista should be okay to get a new pass if yours is expired. But if you're from Tucson, like me, and your pass expired, you cannot get a new one at this time. Um, I asked if that would change for this coming weekend, and they did not think so. So it may change later in the summer, but not right now. So that's a very relevant issue for um, this year's survey. If I, if you, and I'm, I am asking people beforehand, do you have a relevant pass before I put them on any route on the fort? But if you see yourself on a fort route and you don't have a pass, let me know immediately. Um, or if you have a Fort Pass and are interested in doing one of these routes that will be available this year, since a lot of Tucson people can't do those routes, let me know. Um, okay, so let's now go to share screen. Okay, here we are. Okay, share. Okay, so you guys can hopefully see my screen here. And the first thing I wanted to, to cover is this where everything is on the website. So on the Arizona Important Bird Areas website, um, which is aziba.org. Bars getting in the way. Okay. So if you go to aziba.org and then you go to the resources tab, which is always, always available whenever you're um, on the website. You go to the resources tab. I have some standard things here. I have a, a basic one about IBA protocol for our all bird surveys, a little page on the chestnut collar long spur surveys this past winter, but the next one is elegant trogan surveys at Skylands. There's other stuff here too, stuff about cuckoos and all sorts of stuff, but the, the trogan one is the one we want for this. And this goes to a page specifically for the trogan survey. So I have some introduction information about why we do these surveys. I have the dates for this year, the sign up link, to sign up to help with, with any of these uh, five surveys, of which we are doing four and five this weekend. I also have some survey resources that have been here the last few years. So if you've helped with um, these surveys before, a lot of this will be relevant, or be, uh, it's all relevant, but will be very, um, something you're used to seeing. So I have here a link to a PDF from Rick Taylor's book, which is now out of print. So we, we scanned a, a copy that Tucson Audubon had and put the information up. It's all about, uh, Where did you go? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so this, this link is, uh, let's see here. So I have here a PDF of the book from Rick Taylor and he, in the book, he describes the different calls. And it's just a little chapter I scan. It's only a few pages, but it's very interesting. If you're not familiar with the, the sounds that Trogans make, it's actually very, very interesting to read it because it's sort of his opinion, like Rick's opinions from many, spending many, 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 many years in the field watching Trogans on what some of their different calls can mean. And it really is pretty cool. Now I've learned from the last few Zoom meetings I've done that if I click these audio files, which are also linked on here. So these audio files, which go directly to some uh, Arizona field ornithologist audio files, the coin call, the cow call, and the wiki key call. If I click them here, if you click them on your computer at home, you can they go straight to audio files that you can listen to. If I click them here, you guys won't be able to hear it on the Zoom meeting. I have since been informed <laughs> they don't they don't uh, come through. So I have the similar calls on my phone that I'm going to play so that it actually my my computer microphone picks it up. But a really interesting link right below that is one from Cornell, and it says you know identification tips on how to find elegant trogans and other information can be found here. If you are new to trogan surveys. Um, this is very, very helpful information. The Trogan surveys are very popular. Trogans are superstars. People love them. So these surveys often attract a few people where this is their very first bird survey or their brand new beginning birders. And so I do like to cover this information briefly since this can be very helpful to someone who is not used to doing a survey for Trogans. So this link from All About Birds from Cornell is great. It's got great 
um, images of trogons. It's got little videos you can watch of them calling and moving. It's got information of sort of tips on how to look for them because they are quite sneaky. A bird this brightly colored, you wouldn't think could hide, but they're pretty good at not being seen when they don't want to. But part of the reason we do these surveys this time of year in late May or sometimes in very early June is this is when trogons are very, very vocal. They call a lot this time of year. A lot of them are still sort of, they're, they're mostly on territory by now, which is also important for a survey that they're not still roaming around, which makes our data look weird. But they're mostly on territory, but some of them, the males are sometimes still courting females or, or often at this time of year exactly on the stage of showing females nesting cavities, trying to get them to commit to, to that territory and, and, and him as a male. Um, males sort of disputing the boundaries of their territories, exactly where the edges are, um, or sometimes in some years they actually are nesting at this this phase, are actually maybe on eggs, but usually not. Usually they're not quite nesting yet. So they're very vocal, and because they're not usually nesting yet, it is uh, you know safer to be playing a call at them because trojans will respond to a call especially this time of year. Later in the summer, they get much more quiet and much more concerned about taking care of their young. But this time of year where they're still being quite feisty, they will often respond to a call. And the areas, now, if you're on the fort, there are some restrictions about playing trogan calls, especially in Wachuca Canyon. So we need to be aware of that. But everywhere else, um, which is all the, sort of the forest service lands and the rest of the, um, the Huachucas, it is permissible to play. Now in the Chiricahuas, it's a similar problem with South Fork. The Forest Service does not allow the playing of bird calls in South Fork since it's a, such a heavily birded area. So we need to be aware of these restrictions, but if you're outside of these areas, you can play calls you know, when you want to, to try to get birds to call. So this is a really great useful information about trogans if you need it, and some really cool videos of, of trogans doing their thing out in the field. Okay, so the calls that this main surveyor resource page for Trogan surveys refers to um, are the three main calls that one can hear this time of year for Trogans. The first one is the coin call. Trogans are not passerines, so they don't sing in a traditional sense, but this is sort of what you could think of as a male singing. So this is probably the most commonly heard sound from trogans. It's sort of like a, um, it sounds like a little dog barking or a little, it's a beautiful sound, right? So, but it's it's definitely a, a quite a loud sound when you're in a canyon when they're doing it. So coin call is their loudest call. It's, if you hear that, you almost certainly have a male that is sort of just advertising that this is his territory, um, whether it be to females or to other males or whatever. So that's sort of like you can think of as male singing. I have heard females do that call but much shorter, they do far fewer coinks, and all female vocalizations and elegant trogans are at a much, much lower pitch than females, almost like a baritone pitch, very low, almost a full octave below that male. So she would do coink, 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 much, much lower pitch. Uh, but the one I hear females do sometimes, but, but also males, is the second call that's referred to on the website, which is the, we call the cow call. So that's the, the cow call, or I think of it sometimes as the cha-cha-cha call. It's much, it's like lower in pitch. It's it's not as loud, too. When you hear this call, you're, you're closer to the trogan than you think. And it's a far more sort of emotionally intense kind of call. It's a, it almost comes off like a contact call to me. I often will investigate a, a trogan doing this sound and find out he does have a mate. So I think it's a call they often do between, or he'll do to his female. So if you hear that call, you very well may have a pair and it's worth investigating. But um, I've also heard males do this call when they're kind of squaring off against each other. So Rick calls it an intensity call and I think that's a good way to put it. It's, it's a, when they're having very intense feelings about something, whether it be towards their female or, um, towards uh, a rival male. So it's a very intense call. I have heard females do that if, if they if they don't say much, female trojans, but when they do, when I have heard them say something, it's usually that. And again, it's a full octave lower 
than the male. So very low, cha 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 cha, very low, and usually in response to a male doing it. The last call they all need to be aware of is the wiki key call, which is the alarm call. So the way it sounds here in the um, in the uh, app here is a call I've heard them give in the winter too, where they don't seem particularly alarmed. But it is definitely a call that um, when they're very upset, when you're near a nest and they're very alarmed and they give that call, it sounds incredibly intense. They are very, it's, it's a weak key, but even it's, it's, it's startling when you hear it because they sound very disturbed. They sound very alarmed for sure. So when you hear that, you know that they are actually quite alarmed. It's a, it's a very shocking call when you hear it. And if we hear that, and the protocol talks about this, that we need to then back off away from the source of that call since we don't want to be disturbing them off of a nest or something for sure. Okay, so that's sort of some basic information about the Trogan surveys themselves and how, um, and about Trogans, about finding Trogans and understanding what we're hearing and what it means. So Trogans are far more likely to be heard than seen. So if we go further down the page, um, I have something at the very bottom that I think is relevant and, and new. I have a, a little paragraph about the surveys and sort of what they entail in terms of that these are sort of a most of the day commitment, some routes involve hiking, some less so. And I have a little video that I made last year on um, a survey sort of just describing what these surveys are about. Now, most of you have done these surveys for many years, so you know exactly this information. But this was, uh, I did this last year based on some feedback I got from people who had signed up for the first time that didn't really understand what they were getting into. So that's, that's what this is about. Uh, I also have the results from last year, from the last several years of surveys below, and these are each on their own little page for each year. So above it, this is what's really very important. So I have here information for specific surveys, separate pages for each mountain range with information and data forms. So for the Wachukas one, if you click on this link, it takes you to the Wachukas page, the Elegant Trogan Survey of Wachukas Mountains Resources. So this is the information specifically for the survey on Saturday. So I have, um, oh, those links are not active yet. I will fix that. I have here where in, in a, later today, you'll be able to download the protocol and instructions and print it if you'd like, uh, a data form that can be downloaded here, and then uh, routes and team assignments, which we'll talk about in a moment. I have a few resources of maps too, where uh, these are just downloads like PDFs. So this one here is a whole, the whole section in Tucson Audubon's Finding Birds in Southeast Arizona book about the Huachucas. So if you're unfamiliar with the area and you signed up for, for the survey, this is a really good background source about, uh, for information about the area. I have here uh, a really good image map. This is the same hiking map that Rick and I have handed out at past, you know, past years at the meetings for this survey, but you can see it yourself right here and it's a PDF, quite a good hiking map of the area. And then I have here, enter your results here for this online survey. And I'll put this in an email to everybody too, but this is the link to access the online data form, basically to enter your Trogan data. And this is very important, even if you don't get any Trogans, it's incredibly important that you, you enter your data there so that we, we know it was searched and that there weren't any Trogans. I have here a thing about Zoom meeting video. Once we're done with this meeting, that video will be put online right here. So if you're viewing the webpage after the meeting, there will be a video window right here. And I have our interactive map of um, the routes. So this is using Google My Maps. It's embedded here. If you click this view larger map, you can do a full screen version and it is right here. So this is the, the map we've created uh, over the last few years of the Huachucas and then showing the, the pretty close but slightly approximate for some of these areas um, routes and what where exactly they, they start and end. So like Ram, this is Ramsey Canyon, so there's three Ramsey, there's Lower Ramsey, Middle Ramsey, and then Hamburg, and then uh, a special one we added the last couple of years for Pat Scott in Wisconsin. So they're all labeled, um, they're all here in the, the side window too, so you can sort of click on them and see what's going on and they do have um, some information about each of these sections as well in the, the info window. So this is a, an interactive map. You can zoom in and see what's going on. You can see the topo. You can change 
the background. You can change it from base map to, to imagery if you'd prefer, or a basic map, which isn't that helpful for what we're doing. But topo or, or imagery, you can, you can toggle between the two, whatever's more helpful for you. So this is an interactive resource uh, for you guys. So then we also have, um, if you go back to that, that same page, but if you can click on Chiricahua Mountains one, and I also have the link repeated here to enter your survey results. But if you click on the Chiricahua's one, it takes you to the Chiricahua's page. Chiricahua Mountains, survey info and data forms. So uh, I do have the protocol and data forms posted here. And then the link to view the routes and team assignments, a topo map of the Chiricahua's, and that's that same map that we often hand out at the meeting. Uh, again, the Finding Birds in Southeast Arizona, Tucson Audubon book, the section on the Chiricahua Mountains, in case you need some background information on the area. The link to enter your info, the Zoom meeting video will be placed here. And again, an interactive map, uh, very similar to what we had for the um, Wachuca's map right here, but for the Chiricahuas. So, and I do update these maps over time. So if you come up with some information like, oh, I, this is a better endpoint or something, let me know and I, I can adjust these maps. But, um, and I do try to improve them every year for the survey. So they're getting better and better over time. Uh, okay, so then the, another thing I wanted to cover is the differences in, in protocols between these two surveys. All the Wachuca Canyon, all, excuse me, all the Wachuca Mountains surveys um, for, the, for the Saturday survey, all of those are the basic protocol of you're assigned a section and you spend the morning moving through that section looking for trogans and documenting where you find trogans. So that's, that's what those are all about. So you're assigned a canyon or, or a portion of a canyon if it's an especially thick area for trogans. So Ramsey has a lot of trogans, so we divide that one up into several, several routes. But some of these areas uh, are not as dense with trogans, so they might be longer routes, so you can spend the morning moving through the whole area and just documenting where you have trogans. So that's how everything in the Wachuca looks. And the Chiricahuas, many of the routes are, um, here's the Chir bigger Chiricahuas map, many of the routes in the Chiricahuas are in this famous complex of South Fork of Cave Creek and North Fork of Cave Creek. So these are smaller territories and it's a different protocol. If you're familiar with the Santa Rita's survey we do, it's similar to that in that in the Madera Canyon complex, where it's very densely packed with trogans, um, we have people assigned territories where they spend the first several hours of the morning, you know, being at the center of their territory. They're kind of assigned midpoint and staying at that midpoint. You can move around a little bit, but you want to generally stay towards the center of your territory, near that assigned midpoint, and then on your data form, be documenting when you hear or see trogans and whether they are up canyon from you or down canyon from you. The reason we do that is especially, I don't know, they do this a lot in South Fork, the trogans, they'll patrol up and down the canyon and it can be very easy for, the, for, for all of us to be fooled, tricked by the trogans and get a higher count than normal. So if everyone's documenting when they're hearing trogans up and down canyon from them and then when we look at the data later, we're able to see, oh, these two people, you know, two, routes away from each other, herd trogans at the same time, those have to be different birds. So that's the purpose of that. So much of the Chiricahua's routes are this sort of stationary protocol, we call it, and the protocol form uh, document talks about this at length, but I also wanted to share it with spoken words that many of the routes in the Chiricahua's are these sort of sit and listen and observe protocols. And then the last several hours of your time, you are free to roam around up and down your, your route looking for trogans. Because often you'll hear trogans, you know, one direction and you want to go explore it and see if you can see them or maybe find a nest or, you know, get more information. And that is totally fine the last few hours of your um, morning, which the, the protocol does talk about. But we do have some other routes in the Chiricahuas that are more of what we're used to in the Huachucas, these sort of hike around um, areas where you're not restricted to sitting in one place for a particular amount of time. You can, if you think you heard something and you want to pause and stop and listen for a while, you certainly can, but you're not required to. And one of those is Rucker Canyon to the south, which has been done the last several years, um, the southwest. The west side of the Chiricahuas have not had very many trogans reported in the last several decades. So we haven't really been doing it that much, but there has been some recent reports from within West Turkey Creek of uh, elegant trogans being detected. 
So we are adding some routes on the, the west side. And I have had a couple of volunteers to do some of these new routes on the west side. But if you want to do one of the new routes on the west side, if that speaks to you, let me know because that is um, sort of a different opportunity for the Chiricahuas. But the vast majority of our sections in the Chiricahuas are on this, this east, sort of the, the area near portal of, the, of North Fork and South Fork of, of Cave Creek. Okay, so that is sort of a tour of the, the two areas. Now for the Huachucas, sorry, backtracking back to, to Saturday's survey of the Huachucas, many of the areas are within the fort, excellent canyons of the, of the Huachucas. Many of our areas are from the Sierra Vista side, the east side of the Huachucas. But I do have some routes on the southwest side, which are also quite good and do have trogans in here. Bear Canyon, every year has trogans. This is a new one we've just added called Wakefield. And also this area around um, Parker Canyon Lake, this area of what is known as the Canelo Hills is kind of a foothills, a west foothills of the Huachucas and is much closer to Sonoida than it is to, um, uh, to Sierra Vista. And this area has Trogans. We have had trogans in the last few years, so this is a very good area. So if this is if this is one that you're more interested in, uh, sort of this general area, please let me know. Some of them I do have covered already. Sunnyside is um, covered, but if someone's interested in doing Scotia, which is a lovely canyon on the the west side of the Huachucas, let me know. Uh, it's a bit of a drive getting in there, but if you're coming from the Sonoya area or Tucson area, this actually can be closer almost than the Sierra Vista area. And there's just some lovely, lovely spots in the Huachucas. And the Huachucas, of all of our mountain ranges, Huachucas is usually the highest count of trogans. So it's usually in the 50 range for trogans. So, so quite a good, quite a good area. Okay, so let's see here, going back to our Elegant Trogan Resources page. Uh, again, I have that online link to enter your data after the fact, that's quite important. Another big difference, since we're not meeting afterwards, is um, I need everyone to contact me when they're safely out of their route. I understand this is difficult in the Chiricahuas where cell phones don't work so well in many of those places, but when you get a chance, send me a text message. The, the phone number, my phone number will be in the, e the follow-up email I send after this meeting uh, and also remind people about this, but either send me a text message or if you're in an area like if you live in Portal where cell phones are not reliable, send me an email. Just let me know that you, you got out safely. You, know, you can wait a day or two to enter your data if you'd like online, but um, I, I would like to hear that people are safe because normally that's one of the main functions of the meeting after the survey is to make sure everybody got out okay. So do let me know when you're out safely so that, because uh, if I don't hear from people, I do, I do worry and fret since for all surveys that we do, um, for Tucson Audubon, my number one priority is everyone's safety. People getting out safe, being safe, getting out safely. If something, like if it's getting too hot and it feels unsafe, turn back, you know. Um, I'd rather miss data and miss birds than have people be unsafe. So safety is my number one priority. Everyone having a nice day is, is a really high priority too. And then getting the best data we can is um, the next priority. So in that order, safety is absolutely the number one priority. So some of these times we do these surveys and it can be quite hot out. If you need to end early because of the heat or, or anything else goes wrong, you, you lose your water or something you need to have, please do take steps to protect yourself and those around you first before trying to get data. We can always go back and do an area later in the week if we have to. I, I, safety is the number one priority. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to cover is this, this question of GPS. So, some people have hiking GPS units. Uh, if you do, like little handheld garments or something, if you do, this is the time to pull it out and bring it out because <laughs> it's, it's, your data is most helpful if you're able to assign some sort of coordinate. It doesn't have to be UTMs, the metric. It can be decimal degrees or even lat long. I can convert all of those between um, the different formats, but it is very, very helpful to get a coordinate for, for trogans when you have them for your data. Because then we do, um, when the surveys are over, I do map all the data and then share that with all of you guys so we can see where the trogans are within the mountain ranges from year to year. So if you can at all get a coordinate, that is extremely helpful. If you're unable to do that, if you don't have that ability, that is fine. A description of where it was can also work because then we can sort of put an approximate pin on the map. 
be like, oh, I was two miles up the, the trail. I mean, that, that, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty helpful. But it's easier than ever these days to do GPS coordinates when you're out and about. Now, back in the day, the only way to do it was with those handheld uh, Garmin devices or other, you know, hiking GPS devices. But smartphones are actually very, very good at this. So I do have a document started that I'll share with everybody with some information about how to use uh, the Google My Maps on your phone, if you'd like, those, those custom maps with the routes on them. You can actually view that on, on your smartphone. But also there's standalone apps that work very well for uh, being out in the field and getting, sometimes some of them will show you a map of where you are. Some of them just give you coordinates of where your current location is, which can be incredibly helpful. And they do work even if you're in an area without cell phone service. So you would think a phone wouldn't know where it is if it doesn't have cell phone service. But so I've tested my smartphone compared to a Garmin hiking unit and tried to see in areas where there is zero cell phone service, no phone calls can be made, no text messages can be sent or received, zero cell phone service, and tested the capability of the phone to know its location through these sort of GPS apps and compare it to a Garmin and they are shockingly close. It is pretty darn close. So these phones do not communicate with satellites uh, in a similar way to the, the Garmin hiking units do. So they can tell you quite a lot. So there's some free apps that can do this and there's also ones you can pay for. But um, so here's some top recommendations. I have collected some recommendations from volunteers uh, as well as my own experience to see you know, then I have a little document that I'll share with everybody with information about that. But if you have an app that you particularly like, please do let me know uh, if it's one you want to recommend to other people, and I will get that information out to everybody because this can be incredibly useful out in the field in terms of marking where your trogans are or where where anything is. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna stop share. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Thank you. I see some comments on the side. That's fantastic. I'm going to go through and unmute everybody. And let's do questions. Right, you are unmuted. Is that everybody? Okay. Some of you I'm unable to unmute, so you might have to do yourselves. I don't know why I've done it. It's done this the last few times. Um, but if you have a question, well, yeah, please, please, anyone go ahead. Anybody have any questions? I see Trisha's just good to go. I know you know what's going on, Trisha. Okay. Um, can you just hear me? To, just to let you know, uh -huh. because I host Zoom meetings and I've realized you don't necessarily see what we see. We did see a screen across the middle that said you have an option to unmute yourself or stay muted so okay yep. all right so you saw that as a participant correct okay i that. just started using zoom this spring like everyone in the world it seems like because okay. all of our meetings have to be this way okay that's good to know i think i didn't realize that yeah okay jenny it's yeah. lori hi uh did you need us to do more of the south fork road or just the area that you have assigned to us i'm not sure yet um i'll have to see okay. how many people um because I know in the past, sometimes we've had you do the, the territory below. Um, yeah. I will have to let you know. know. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for being willing to do that if needed, Lori. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, what time do we start? Excellent question. Okay. So the protocol does talk about this, but um, the surveys are supposed to ideally run from 6 a.m up to 11. If you want to go later, that's totally fine. Uh, when I was in Madera Canyon last weekend, I ended up going later because I started hearing more Trogans calling later in the morning, which is kind of strange, which can't happen. So you can go later if you want. Um, it's not a terribly hard 6 a.m. start. I know some people come from quite far, especially with difficulties of 2020, where many people are not staying in hotels if they're coming from further. Um, so if you have to start a little later in the morning, that is that is fine. I appreciate everyone helping. Uh, so it's not a super hard 6 a.m. start, super strict or anything, but uh, that's ideal to start as close to 6 a.m. as possible. Because the birds, the trogans are often calling more in the morning. 
but if your situation requires you to start a little bit later in the morning, that is fine. I also have a question here about the gate to Wachuca Canyon. That is a very relevant question. Also one I've encountered in the past few years is the gate to Garden Canyon can be locked in the morning. I will call the MP's office, the military police office, uh, the day before the survey and see if I can ask them nicely to make sure those gates are open. They have been very accommodating in the past. Now they do sometimes forget, <laughs> or especially in Garden Canyon, they'll lock the gate if they had a, a report of a bear up there. Um, and this is a vehicle gate. It's a gate you could easily walk through, but if your route is way at the top, you, walking is not really a very good option. So I will call them ahead of time and try to ask, remind them to please keep the gate open for the survey. If that doesn't work, there is a phone number from the military police, and I will actually make sure I share that with you guys. And then the MP phone number uh, to call them, and they will. Uh, I have had that happen in the past. I called the military police, and they sent a they sent a car out with a military police guy in there very very quickly to unlock the gate. So they do try to be accommodating. So that's a very very good question, but I'll call ahead of time. I have some requests for specific routes. That's great. Any any other questions or comments? Right. Any any comments about the, the Trogan surveys or if, if you have a particular route in mind? Okay. Oh, you know what? There is something I forgot to, to say. Gosh dang it. Okay, so let me share my screen again real quick. Uh, the Rowlett had a yellow bit of Vireo in their yard yesterday. Who did? Oh, sorry. I was talking to Mark. The Rowlett's here. In oh, wow. What? A yellow bit of Vireo. All right. So, um, one thing I forgot to say, I can't remember if I said this or not, I'm sorry, is uh, on these Trogan pages, the pages for the specific surveys, I do have um, a link to the routes and team assignments, and those go to these online documents from Google Word, like a Google Word document, basically, that I can update in real time and you guys can view as it's updated. So here I have the routes, as well as those who's been assigned to them. Um, and this is based on information that was either put in the, the sign-up survey or from emails. I have not quite finished going through all the emails on this yet, so this will be updated within the next hour or two. I'll be updating this a lot. If you see, and this is where you can see who's been assigned what or where you've been assigned. So this is where the routes are for the Chiricahuas. This is linked to on the the Chiricahua's page, and then on the Wichita's page. And I have them in bold, Elegant Trogan Routes and Team Assignments. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot to say that. So that's that's what is going on here. So this is normally the document I would email to everybody, but we're doing it online. And then this allows me to make changes and not send everyone a million versions of this document. So this is the, the living version. And if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing yourself, give me a couple hours, but then, you know, refresh it. And there could be some new information added here, okay? So and I've been moving stuff around a little bit. So like on the Wachuca one, I've been organizing it by Fort Wachuca routes, Sierra Vista area routes, not on the fort, and then Southwest slopes of the Wachuca. So I've been rearranging some of the routes just where they are on the document to make more sense. So that's where you find out where you've been assigned. And if there is a problem, please let me know. And just give me a call on my cell phone is the best way to get me. And that phone number uh, is posted on the, on the website. So uh, any other? Uh, final um, thoughts or, or comments? Anything helpful that you found that you want to share with other participants? Okay. Well, feel free to call me at any time. Um, I will not be around this afternoon, but I will before that, and I will be around all day tomorrow as well as Friday. Uh, I'll be driving much of Friday to get to the Wachukas, but I still, I, I will have my phone with me. So feel free to give me a call on my cell phone or text me or, or email me. But uh, please let me know if you need any, if you have any questions or need any help um, or some more information. And I really appreciate you helping with the, the Elegant Trogan surveys. Thank you so much. Yeah. So much. And Jenny, you'll, you'll email me if, the, if we need to cover that. You'll email me? Yes, Lori, yes. I will okay. email you about whether I need you to do the, uh, okay. the route adjacent to, you, to your normal route. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for all you do. Oh, thanks. Thank you all for all you do. Could not do these surveys without you guys. It's a huge amount of effort. I appreciate everyone's help doing this. So many people helping. It's great. And uh, thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'll see you guys uh, out in the field. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.